Hey everybody, welcome to the Automation Show Live. My name is Sean Tierney from Insights in Automation, and it's great to be back with you. I hope you all are having a great day. Um, today we're going to take a look at another IFM IOLink Master on Profinet, and this time we're going to talk to a temperature sensor. Now, guys, let me know in the chat if you're not seeing the live stream. I know uh, what I see here is about 30 seconds behind, but uh, all indications I have here is that everything's working. So in any case, if not, let me know in the chat. Right now I'm only seeing YouTube chat, but I'm hoping in a little bit that I'll be able to see the LinkedIn chats as well. In any case, let's take a look at the device we're going to be uh, setting up today. And I'll go to the overhead here. And you can see it here, just like we did yesterday, but this is the temperature sensor. Look, it's, uh, it's getting a little hot in here with all the studio lights on and everything. Let me see if I can bring that temperature up. Now, when I tested this out, uh, early in the morning yesterday morning um, even though i have the unit set to display fahrenheit what i was seeing in uh in the plc was celsius so 77 fahrenheit was giving me i think it's 25 celsius we'll see but in any case i just wanted to show you that and again this is a hands-on um demo that if you come to my training courses here at the automation school uh within an hour of albany new york you'll be able to actually try it yourself. And of course, I'm going to use the 1200 again today because I didn't have any time this morning. It was just a busy morning before work. I didn't have any time to get the 1500 sample project up and running. So in any case, with that, let's go over to the PC here. And did I hit the right key? Yes, I did. Okay. So before we get started, if you guys don't know, I do this to promote my company. Um, I'm self-employed. I uh, make money two different ways. Looking for my mouse here. There it is. Um, Vendor sponsor uh, uh, videos with me, like uh, this look at the IND360 on Ethernet IP. If you guys didn't see that yet, please check it out. You'll find those videos on both uh, YouTube, on uh, LinkedIn, and on here on the automationblog.com. We also have a, uh, I'm doing this on Sundays, kind of volunteering for the Automation Museum, which doesn't really exist yet, but we're trying to raise money for the open one. And I've been uh, interviewing people. This is the one about the history of Wonderwear. And of course, you'll see all my previous videos and podcast interviews. Got 250 podcasts, got, I don't know, 2,000 articles and videos. And the other way I pay my, keep the lights on and pay my bills, it's through selling courses. And I didn't want to leave the impression yesterday, if you're new to the channel or show, um, that I only cover Siemens. I cover a lot of Rockwell as well. And so Compact Logics, Control Logics, Micrologics, Panel View Plus, et cetera, et cetera. And that's at the Automation School. Now, I do want to show you the IODD Finder results for this particular temperature sensor, okay? And this is a one I've covered on the show when it was sampled to me years ago from IFM. Um, I covered it extensively on the show with Siemens and Rockwell and all that. But now I want to integrate it onto IO Link, and so I want to show you that here. So what you're seeing here is I've highlighted the... Um, process data in and out. Okay. So you're seeing two bytes in and you're seeing no bytes out. So we're going to get the temperature in, but that temperature, like what we saw yesterday with the, with the encoder, it's offset by a couple of bits. Right. And so I think I have that somewhere already pulled up. Let me see if I go into my VM. Yeah, there it is. So let me see. Are you guys seeing this? Okay. Let me see. Yeah. I don't have anybody in the control room guiding me. So you guys got to let me know if something's going wrong. I want to see if I can see the uh, chat over on the other platform as well. It's interesting that uh, Restream's acting weird. But in any case, if you're looking at this uh, with me, you will see that uh, bits uh, 0 and 1, they're not part of the temperature, okay? And so we're going to have to shift right again to get rid of those extra bits we don't want, which is cool. We did it yesterday. We'll do it again today, um, this time for temperature. All right, and you can see... Right, we got two bytes, and we're using 14 of those bits from those two bytes for our temperature. Okay, now we're going to see something like 24.5 Celsius uh, will be like the temperature here in the uh, office in the Studio B. Okay, so here is what I did is I sanitized. This is the program from yesterday. I deleted everything I wasn't using, um, just to confirm the IP address, and I did reset the hardware in the field. Although this is a new adapter, I, I did test it at home. And you can see here the IP address for the um, S7-1200. Same thing with 1500. It doesn't matter which one you use. This is this part is all the same. Um, so now I'm going to go and do update accessible devices. Make sure I didn't kick out any Ethernet cables. 
and my mad dash to get in here during lunch. And uh, yep, we can see my PLC and we can see accessible device. And this has kind of been the recurring theme of, of how we're adding devices on Profinet. And I, I think, you know, we've done it quite a bit. This may be the first time you're watching the show, but um, and if it is, I probably should go through this. So I'm just going to call this a DIO. I'm going to call it an AL1302, which is the part number, model number of the unit. And I'm going to call this, I believe this has a MAC address ending in 58. So I'm just going to put a 58 there. And I think that's all I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to do there. And um, I'm going to copy that out of there. Okay, so now let's minimize this guy here. Let's assign the name to that device. Okay, and then we'll bring it into, into our project. And we will likely have to bring in the GSD file because, let's see, Profinet name assigned, so we're good there. So let's go up to Devices and Networks. There's my PLC. Let's go to Options. I'm sorry, Online, Hardware Detection, Profinet Devices. We're going to start a search. And I did not load the GSD file. I'm hoping... Um, it won't take a long time to load, but we can go out and look, do a close-up on the PLC if it does, or we'll talk about something else. Sometimes on these VMs, they just, they're just not as fast as a regular computer, and loading a GSD file can take a, a while. So I'm going to try to add it here. Again, if it's not in the catalog, right, if it's not a Siemens device, it's probably not in the catalog, you're going to have to add that GSD file yourself. And so when you do this, it's going to fail. Okay, but because we did this yesterday, I forgot, it's the same exact model, just a different actual physical device. The GS file is already there, so we didn't have to do that. And it says, hardware detection of IO successfully done. Use so many different products, I, I, it's hard to keep up. But in any case, um, and we as we saw yesterday, you can always click and drag to connect these two, but you can also click here and just assign it that way, which is cool. Um, and as we saw, this was different than the Siemens devices we did. Um, when we go to set this guy up, right? Come in here. Let's expand this. Um, we're going to, on this IOLink master, right? We need to, whoops, let's go back here. All right, so now what I'm going to do is let me switch over to that side. Okay, good. Okay, so we get the device up, right? We're looking at it. You know, I need to, I, I've been forgetting to do this. I need to give it an, a good IP address. So we're going to use 2.222. That should be the next available one if you've been following me. I've just been adding one to the IP address every every time we do an episode. And so that's that. And then for the name, I don't want it to generate. Well, yeah, it, because, it, because it imported the device that has the right name. So that's good. Okay, so just going to make sure it was a problem we had yesterday. I didn't put it on the same subnet. And of course, it wouldn't work. So now with that done, we are good here. You even got the name there. That's great. We are going to uh, look at the ports now. The ports I'm using, the port I'm using is port number four. So we will disable all the other ports. Okay, so we'll disable that one. We'll disable this one. And I'm just going to do just for the sake of not having error, any errors on the, uh, any red lights. I don't want any red lights on any of our, you know, connections. We'll disable them because we're not using them. That way everything will be in the green. Okay, and now for this guy... I know from looking at um, the data, we had uh, two bytes, right? And that was from, let me pull up the IODD. Let's see here, where are you? There we go. We have two bytes in. So let me minimize this guy. And let's go ahead and do the two bytes. This is input. Okay, two bytes in. Can you guys see that? Okay, good. And we'll drop that right there. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, so we should be good, right? What did I forget? I don't think I forget anything. Okay, so let me do this. Let me uh, save my project as... Yeah, that'll be good. We'll save it that name. Okay. And you know what I need to know, though? I really want to know what uh, addresses it assigned it. I'm suspecting it got 68 again because yesterday the device got 68, but I'm not seeing it in here. All right, nice. Oh, there it is right there. I'm just looking at this list and I'm seeing all this nothing, and then it's right here. Okay. So 68, 69, and 70. 70 is your PQI. Okay. 
68 and 69 are the two bytes we're interested in, okay? And so, let's uh, go ahead and close this up. And, yeah, no, we should be good to go. Let's, uh, before I do that, though, I want to go to, okay, we'll add the program in later. We'll look at the data block. I do have a, a temperature, a word temperature we haven't used yet. Let's go to the PLC tags, mm, tags. Come on. Okay, and you can see I've already created the tags. So 68 and 69, and then I did, those are bytes, each byte, and then I have the word here. And if we go to the watch table, and I'm just showing you this before we go online to show you I recreated uh, this last night. You can see I have uh, the binary, and so we'll be able to see what the binary pattern is. So we are ready to download this bad boy. Great. Start search. There it is. Let's load it in. Okay. Load it in. And in mere moments, we will have the project downloaded to the PLC. Got to start it up. Okay. Let's go online. Make sure we get all green lights there, all green uh, icons. And we've seen before when uh, it can't find it, it, you know, it won't connect. Or if you have the wrong port selected or anything, you'll see the red. And you go into diagnostics and you can find out more about that. We did that in previous episodes. So let's go ahead and go right to our watch table, which I think I already have open. Let's start watching or monitoring. And here you're going to see, okay, um, this number here, right? If we took a look at this number, it's not going to look like, let's go ahead and change this to decimal. Okay, 968 degrees. Thank God it's not 968 degrees. So we got a problem here, and the problem is we get a couple extra zeros, right? That is uh, off, off to the, uh, shifted to the left. Two, two zeros. So would you imagine that two zeros would make such a big difference? But in binary, it really does. So, but I wanted to show you here that you can see that, um, and I'm going to switch my headshot over to the other side. You can see that this byte and this byte are combined when you look at it as a word. Okay, which is what I wanted to show you there. So in any case, let's go ahead and write our program. So we'll go in here. And if you remember from yesterday, if you watched yesterday, we were using the shift right. SHR. Okay. Nice. And for the input, that's why, that's another reason why I put the word there, why I created this, uh, this word, because I want to do an entire word. I want to shift it by two. Okay. And the output will be, I renamed the encoder tag to temperature. Oh, I do that all the time. There it is. That's what I want. Okay. So that's the program we want. And yeah, let's go ahead and do a runtime download. Should be consistent. Everything's the same. I'm going to even add new tags this time. Okay. Uh, let's monitor it so we can see that it's actually working. Everything's good. Okay, so now let's go back to our watch table. Okay, and here we see 243. Okay, and that's actually the right number because that means it's uh, 24.3 degrees Celsius. Now, what I'll do here is I'll reach over and uh, you can see it climbing. I don't know why it's not climbing so very fast. Come on, baby, you gotta climb. I'm going to get this so I can see it while I do this. Is it going faster now? Seven seventy-seven. Okay, so that is that's all we have to do. Okay, and so um, pretty easy to do, right? I mean, the biggest things when you're using these particular uh, IFM blocks, right, is we had to go to the page for this IM, IFM block 
on the IFM website, which was easy to find, right? We know it's an AL1302, and they have a downloads area on that page where you download the, the, the whole uh, zip file with the GSD files, with the IOD files, although I, it's easy to get the IOD, IODD files from the IODD finder. And um, they had instructions, that sheet I showed you with the instructions uh, was there as well. And that really walked us through adding this to Profinet. Now, I think I'm going to take a break from Profinet just because I don't have any more of these uh, these hands-on boards um, uh, made up for Profinet devices. I'm going to switch over to doing Rockwell. I have over the years put a lot of Rockwell devices to feature in my courses. So hopefully this Saturday I will be building up a bunch of these boards using Rockwell. I get some pretty cool things that I don't think any other trainer has, online or in-person trainer has, that I want to show you guys. And so we'll see how many of those I can get built up this weekend. As far as tomorrow, what I want to do is if everything goes right tomorrow morning, I want to show you guys the uh, the free digital twin I'm giving all my students, right? And uh, it's pretty cool. I was working back and forth with the company who makes the digital twins and talking about uh, changes. I had some typos and then I, I need to be able to modify it myself so I can make it because the version I have right now is for my current courses, the courses I'm filming right now but I want to make additions for all the previous courses I did, like uh, the MicroLogics, PLC Basics, Control Logics Basics, Compact Logics. I want to just give everybody a custom version that works with those courses. And so there's going to be no charge. There is a, um, there's a trial for the software, the Digital Twin software, and then you can buy it if you want or do a monthly thing, but um, you can try it out and use it for free. But I think that's what I'm going to try to do tomorrow. If I do not get the Digital, digital Twin working, in the morning and i don't have any other ideas of what to do at lunchtime i will uh there will be no live stream tomorrow i am talking to uh, different people different vendors about coming on next week so instead of maybe me doing a hands-on a, a live edition of the automation show i may end up doing interviews having different vendors on and if you're a vendor and you want to come on there's no charge to come on during lunchtime that's why i do it at lunch right it's not like i'm going to spend oh did you guys catch the copia episode yesterday of um the automation podcast those usually take me five to six hours to do editing is is a just takes a long time trying to take out as many ums and ahs as you can and uh, any glitches a lot of times when people are doing demos you get a there's a pause in between switching so um those are expensive for me to do but the lunch time we just sit down and have lunch and we talk about stuff so if any vendors out there any users out there we also i'm hoping to have on the uh hands-on I'm sorry, the History of Automation podcast this weekend, a legend. Now, this is not live. This is something I'm recording. But working with my co-hosts, Gary and Jeremy, we're hoping to have a, a legend of automation on, somebody who knows about some of the first PLCs ever made. So we'll see if that comes off, but I'm hoping it is because, um, you know, I was still in school when the first PLC. Actually, I was born the same year PLCs were born. So in any case, that tells you something, right? So um, in any case, I think that's all I got for you today. I want to wish you guys all a great Thursday afternoon. If you're watching this after the fact, I, I want to wish you a great afternoon wherever you are. And I also want to wish you all good health and happiness. And until next time, my friends, peace.